Hello, race fans, and welcome to the Tyreek Waldron Motorsports Show podcast. I am your host, Tyreek Waldron, a.k.a. The Big Ticket. Uh, this is a podcast that covers all things motorsport, you know, ranging from NASCAR, uh, IndyCar, Formula One, WRC, you know, um, even the European Le Mans series. Usually what I tuned into that's past, the past race weekend. And uh, this episode today, the topics today, of course, we got our quick bites, just quick little drops and jewels uh, and gems as well as of course the indycar coverage of laguna seca um a little bit about nascar and bristol um and of course there's some other information that's added in there that i haven't really uh specified but as a reminder you know if you enjoyed this podcast be sure to rate it five stars on wherever you stream podcasts i'm available on all platforms and also if you are a person who likes video podcasts, you can head on over to uh, my YouTube uh, channel, which is the Tyreek Walsh Motorsports Show, and uh, go ahead and hit subscribe. There you'll be able to see me, my gestures, and all that good kind of stuff. Um, now, usually I would have like some capturing footage or stuff like that, but at this point in time, still just getting myself back in tune with uh, recording and all that good stuff. So I still want to thank you for tuning in. And uh, let's dive into it, shall we? Um, First things first, of course, with the quick bites. I do have an idea that's brewing in my head, but I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to go through with it at this point in time. Reason I say that, um, well, I I just don't know. I just don't know. Uh, Because me personally, I don't wear a lot of Formula One merch. I don't wear a lot of merch in general. Um, I like my shirts plain and like my fits to be relatively plain, solid colors. But... I have an idea in my mind. An F1 merch giveaway. Uh, My main target, of course, would be Aston Martin, um, as they have came back into F1 this year. And uh, I know some people, you know, everybody likes Ferrari. Everybody is a a fan of McLaren and stuff like that. But me personally, uh, at the beginning of this year, I really enjoyed um, Aston Martin's return. And I would love to be able to share that with... uh, listeners and with viewers reason i say that simply is because hey i thank you for listening i thank you for tuning in and uh i thank you for the support i know sometimes uh i'm not on schedule i know sometimes that i've i've been turned away from recording and stuff like that but hey things are normalizing right now uh for me so i want to thank you uh but like i said it's still an idea just brewing in my head Uh, i'm not 100 percent sure if i'm going to go through it if you think i should by all means go in the comments below uh not exactly sure how to set it up but i'm pretty sure i can figure that out in like five minutes um moving away from that though uh dtm sophia flores has finally uh been rewarded her first dtm points in the series uh at assen um she went from p19 to p9 which is obviously pretty impressive that's 10 positions but i believe there was some issue within the race that ended up dropping it down to 13 races altogether so hey either way that's still that's still a positive in my eyes um excuse me um now she's not someone who you know who's lacking in experience she's uh, competed in formula three formula two she's also I'm sorry, not Formula 2, Formula 4. Uh, she's also competed in, um, you know, the 24-hour Le Mans. So she's definitely someone who has a uh, reputation behind her. She's someone who has some credibility behind her as well. Um, don't get me wrong. I believe her highest position is 7th in, I'm not sure what series. But uh, and um, but she's definitely someone who has talent, someone who can showcase talent. And this is a great way for her to be rewarded for that uh, talent and for that Um, ability to you know stay within the race and keep pushing keep going so props to her um i know she had a challenge a few rounds especially with uh some technical difficulties too so i'm glad that she's still learning i'm glad that she's still able to figure out what the next moves are next steps and basically and i mean she's surrounded by two pretty much very experienced people um not only in kevin kelvin vandalin but also in uh, mike rockenfeller or is it john rockenfeller no it's mike rockenfeller yeah mike rockenfeller you know someone who has been who's basically a dtm veteran um so i'm glad that she has those people with her um those people who are teammates and can actually give her uh the necessary tools to to really uh be 
great at performing in DTM. I know that, you know, DTM, I've always, I've talked about it in previous podcasts where DTM has been, you know, financially struggling. Um, not only because of certain, you know, um, marketing and sponsorship type deals, but I think that they're starting to bounce back. I think that, you know, a lot more teams are interested in it. And I do believe DTM is trying to convert to a sustainable fuel at this point in time. But it's going to be that's not going to happen for, I think, the next few years. Um, I did do a podcast about this. I just can't remember what episode or I know it was last year. But uh, as, as we move on, though, I, I also want to talk about uh Esme Hawkey. If you don't know who that is, she is the Porsche Carrera Cup uh, Great Britain champion. Um, she did some amazing work there. You know, pulled off with a first position and the year before that pulled off with third. So constant improvement with her. Um, she also raced in the W Series and uh, she was definitely um, definitely a, a, a great a great driver to watch. Someone to tune into. I do believe you should tune into Esme Hawkey and for sure, Sophia Flores. Now, at this point in time, Sophia Flores has my attention because I never actually tuned into her before. But Esme Hawkey has had my attention from since the Porsche Carrera Cup. From if we go back from since W, not W Series, sorry. Um, if you go back to the Porsche Carrera Cup of uh, what is it, 2019? Um, I believe that's where I actually uh, kind of tuned in. But I'm glad that she's uh, I'm glad that she's making her way in DTM, and she also received her first points. I'm pretty sure. Um, and finished off with what I believe to be a P11 coming from P, uh, coming from 20th on the starting grid and uh, finishing off in 11th. DTM scoring points are way different than, you know, Formula One and that kind of stuff. So impressive work by those two ladies. I do want to see them get successful in DTM, uh, you know, especially in this season. And I guess in the next few seasons, there are some really, you know, uh, experienced people within that DTM field as of right now. Um, Yes, there are some people who just started. There are some rookies in there. Um, but DTM as a whole, in the realm that it's in right now, yes, they have some pretty experienced drivers in there. Um, so I hope these I hope these women learn what they got to, you know, uh, and, and I hope that they get way more competitive, especially with the teammates and stuff that they have as well. I hope that they uh, learn everything they need to and can give these guys a run for their money. Um was i going with this oh european Le Mans, uh the four hour of spa the european Le Mans series um the iron dames iron dames pulled away with a p3 result which is great great work after a very impressive drive i do want to say they manifested it <laughs> and they came through and really got after it uh i also want to you know really talk about the iron links team as well um, the Iron Links team is the Iron Dames as well as the, uh, I guess the regular Iron Links team. Um, they had not only P1, but also P3 because of the Iron Dames. So a double podium for that team. And, um, I'm glad that the Iron Dames were able to showcase that they can really drive. Um, not only that they're exceptionally, uh, competitive in that field, but also that they're destined, they're destined for a P1 you know what i'm saying p3 is just the beginning you know they're destined for a p1 if they keep going at the rate that they're going so by all means good job um i don't like really saying good job good work hands down good work impressive work i love the way that y'all came through and the way that y'all you guys um actually you know did what y'all had to do did what y'all had to do i love the fact i, lo- I love to see it shining i love to see it shining um another thing that i want to talk about uh is the hydrogen mm. What is it? It's the... I have it in my notes. Well, either way, Toyota has been working on their hydrogen car uh, to run in their racing series in the... I forgot what it's called. But they have been working on a hydrogen power car to run in a racing series. As of right now, it has been lower class. But they have said that it has come to a point where it ha- it is on par with, you know, standard internal uh, combustion engines. Now... Or not standard, but with the competitiveness, <laughs> they've come. They're they're now on par with the cars that they're racing against. Um, this is coming off of what I, I think their highest position was twelve. 
something of that nature. They were really bottom of the pack, uh, middle to bottom of the pack. So I'm not necessarily sure how they're still competitive in their latest in their latest run. I'm not really sure how they were still competitive because they were 12th to bottom of the pack, I believe. So by all means, hey, if you guys believe that you're going to be, you know, extra competitive, you got to you got to get the results, too. You can't just say that you're competitive uh, and feel as though you're competitive because you've reached the horsepower parity. You need to provide the result. Horsepower is not where it's at all the time. Um, yes, you could have match the horsepower, but can you match the speed? Can you match the quickness around the corners? Can you actually tackle, you know, certain stuff? You can match the horsepower, but can you match the acceleration? You know, like there's so much other stuff that I'm thinking about that I'm not necessarily sure that they have down just yet because, like I said, they're still fighting very low in the pack. And I'm not necessarily sure how um, I forgot the series. I forgot the series that they're a part of. But in that series, they have like, like a, I think, They have like group one, group two. They're called something else, but I'm gonna call them group one, group two. They go all the way up to five or six, I believe, like something like that. And these guys are technically supposed to be going up against group three and fours, but they're keeping up to par with group five. Uh, they're just barely edging away from group five. So I'm not sure. So I'm not sure if they're actually as competitive as they say they are. In my opinion, I don't think so. I think they need to spend more time really developing and showcasing what they can create. Um, a lot of the times, people, you know, it takes time to develop a car that's going to be competitive, something that's going to be worthy of being competition, something that's going to actually be competition. It's going to take a minute. It's going to take a minute. And I understand that. So they don't necessarily have to rush on providing results or providing with uh, parity with these, you know, um, petrol cars. They don't have to do that. They don't have to do that in my opinion. I think that they can keep it quiet, maybe give out a few results here and there, maybe showcase a little bit of testing, but they don't really have to uh, put out any news until they believe that they can be at the front of the pack, until they believe that they can actually compete at the level that they want to. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's another thing, but like uh, that brings me to like the 9X8 of Peugeot. I don't know if you guys are going to be competitive right out the gate. Granted, obviously, they might be, you know, they might be right out the gate. But I don't think that they're going to be as competitive as they believe right out the gate. Yeah, they're going to be faster than the rest of the field. But are they going to be fast in their, you know, specific class? Um, not necessarily sure, especially with that, with the no wing concept and all that kind of stuff. Not sure. But, hey, it's Peugeot. They've done significant testing on this car and they have fully claimed that their car has a downforce and all that kind of stuff so we i can't wait personally uh i can't wait personally to see whether or not that car is going to be competitive the 9x8 as well as toyota's uh hydrogen power car i cannot wait for those things to actually be competitive because you know that's not only a refreshment a refresher on what you know how cars should be in that class but also a refresher all across motorsport in general as uh it either one you know with the hydrogen power they can showcase a new uh a new way to make power as well as you know in advancements and stuff like that as well as you know now it can show like like the peugeot that could show maybe a different light in in aerodynamics and, and 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 chassis design and all that kind of stuff but that's up to what the teams do that's up to how they evolve and 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 how well they perform because you do have to perform well in order for people to follow in line with the things that you create you have to perform well that's the only way for it to work um so by all means i hope that they do well i hope that toyota and Peugeot do well in the series that they are going to be going into I'm not sure if that's going to be next year or whatever. Toyota has been racing this year. But like I said, they're back in the pack. So I'm not sure if they're, you know, in the competitive space that they want to be. But I hope that they continue to grow. I hope that they continue to shine and get to that point in time. Moving away from that, the Schumacher documentary is out. I have not watched it yet. I wish I had. Um, but it's available on Netflix now. So you can go ahead and tune that in. I know everybody got Netflix everybody gotta have that and if you don't you know somebody that do so <laughs> by all means i think i think all especially all f1 fans 
uh, and all people who are fans of uh, Michael Schumacher should, or Schumacher, I, I say his name is Schumacher, all right, should check into this. Um, I personally, I know I have to watch, okay? It's, it's, it's about an hour and, what, 55 minutes? A two-hour runtime. And, um, you know, definitely something that we could all just tune into and sit down and watch. Um, I'm pretty sure there's already been a ton of people who have watched. Um, me, myself personally, I got to find the time. But I'm going to find it. And I'm going to be able to talk about it in the next podcast episode. <laughs> uh, but, you know, there's exclusive interviews, you know, archive footage that nobody else has. And, you know, and it's it's all about the legend. You know, it's all about his greatness. It's all about, you know, the people who he's not on, not only inspired, also grew up to be um, racers now, you know, with Mick Schumacher and uh, David Schumacher, I believe is his son, who's still in what Formula Two or Formula Three. So he's he, he's coming up like not. Well, no, not he's coming up, but he's created future legends you know he's created future people who can maybe come in and really do uh some great work uh within the sport so definitely something to check out for real check it out um i, I, I will be checking it out as well so <laughs> next thing i want to talk about girls on track uk what an initiative you know what i'm saying what an initiative pushing for equality you know um for Women, females, and of course, I believe equality in general, if I'm being honest with you. Equality in general in motorsport roles across all forms of motorsport. And honestly, um, they had an event, I believe. Well, there was a webinar. I know that for sure. Um, I wasn't able to tune in. I wasn't able to register and tune in, but that sucks because I really wish I was. I really do wish I was. But there was a collaboration with Codemasters that allowed these... Uh, allowed these young women to experience some motorsport based activities uh and definitely dive into the virtual world of motorsport as well um there was definitely a whole lot of sim racing stuff um some technical aspects and and they got to meet with some current people who's in the racing environment you know like they got to meet with uh jesus uh rosanna Tennant, who's a broadcaster journalist and commentator uh for i'm not sure if it's the w series but hey all in all she's someone who has been who's on that side of it you know on the broadcasting on the commentating on the journalistic side of motorsport but they also got to meet drivers like uh jamie chadwick who's in the w series right now fighting for that championship so they definitely got to meet and greet with some great people uh learn different things and i'm sure that they're gonna you know it's it's great to see when the community comes in and sees the insight and all that kind of stuff so it's great that they made this a um an event and they i'm great that they made you know the webinar as well so that people can you know come in and see what's happening behind the scenes and can oh my bad and can um really dive into the girls on track initiative uh, i know that sometimes we tend to focus on you know the top tier we tend to focus on uh, the premier motorsport and that kind of stuff, but we also got to focus on the up and comers. We also got to focus on the next generations. We got to focus on, you know, um, those series that don't necessarily get the praise that the uh, the premier version of those series uh, do. You know what I'm saying? Like Formula Four and Formula Three. I know I haven't talked about it, but the more and more that I dive deeper in the motorsport, the more and more that I dive into the behind the scenes and into the deeper. Um, equality fight diversity fight inclusion fight i realized that, that the deeper you go the more you'll find some great talent the more you'll find some great people who are ready for the next level or at least are going to be ready for the next level in the near future um so hey the girls on track uk initiative by all means keep doing what you're doing and uh keep that fight going keep that fight going i i, I think we're gonna have a future um future hey future female f1 champion and i think that's that'll that's probably very soon too so by all means keep doing what you're doing and um keep inspiring definitely inspiration for a ton of people across the world um as i move forward nascar bristol uh, <laughs> i'll be honest i i didn't really tune in greatly to this um the more and more that i try to dive into nascar the more and more that i keep getting confused um now personally i've i've 
I enjoy NASCAR. Don't get me. I, I actually enjoy it. I enjoy the experiences. I enjoy, you know, watching the race and all that kind of stuff. But sometimes I'll be confused um, with, like, stages. They got a regular season champion. Then they got a playoff. Um, the points stuff is a little different than how it's supposed to be. Uh, it's. I got to dive way deeper. And I have to really sit down and take my time and understand NASCAR. But aside from that, Bristol, Kyle Larson, with his Bristol victory, he comes away with six wins, six wins of the season. Um, he was the regular season champion, uh, five wins in that. And um, of course, this is what the round of 16 in playoffs that he just completed. Um, so props to him. You know, he's the NASCAR Cup Series regular season champion. Um one thing I want to highlight, of course, that I'm pretty sure was highlighted across all NASCAR coverage was Chase Elliott versus Harvick uh, situation that really kind of catapulted um, catapulted Larson into the victory. They had some heated discussions and stuff like that within pit lane. Um, when I say highlight, I don't necessarily mean that I'm going to talk about it like extensively. It's just something that I wanted to point out that kind of shaped the way for how things happen. In this race, um, those two really had an alt altercation earlier on within the race, and uh, Chase Elliott was still upset about it, so he over defended um, against Harvick and did not let him pass, which in turn um, gave Kyle Larson the necessary space that he needed in order to come through and steal the win away from Harvick. Now, you know, um, it was still awesome action to see, in, in my opinion. It was still awesome action to see because you got to see two, two, two drivers go head to head. You got to see two people go go at it. And at the end of the race, it was still a close battle. You know, um, I believe Kyle Larson won by what? Four, four hundredths of a second, four tenths of a second, something of that nature. I'm pretty sure it was it was a, it was it was a prairie. Very, very, very close race. Um, but in all, Kyle Larson pulled away with the victory. Now. Bristol, at least, is a very is a relatively exciting uh, event, and I think some someone asked the question if Bristol should be like the like where they have that last race, the last title championship. Um, by all means, I think Bristol is 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 decent, is is a decent um, alternative, but I don't necessarily know if that's the way that y'all want to go. Because in my personal experience, I would say no. Um, and another thing, the 2022 uh, NASCAR season calendar has been released uh at least i'm not sure if it's the official or the provisional i'm pretty sure it's the official but that has been released they are you know really showcasing what they're going to be having next year so by all means tune into that i did not bring that down i was focused on indycar mainly um but tune into that and uh denny hamlin someone who i personally think uh should get the victory that's just how I feel because I do. I am a nice little fan of Denny Hamlin. Um, he had some impressive moves. Yes, he, he has some. He has some good work. I'm not sure if he won two of the three stages, um, or if he won one. I'm pretty sure he won one of those stages. But he was leading for an assortment of laps, um, and of course he also was really going after it. And uh, I believe he was going after it for first against. I'm not 100% sure who he's going against. But he ended up getting some vehicle damage and had to pull off. And from there, I think he finished off in 11th. But was it 11th or 9th? I think it was 9th. But he did move forward uh, into the next playoff round. So, Denny, keep it together um, and uh, go after that victory, man. Don't get too cocky. Don't get too brazen with uh, the fighting and all that stuff. I want to see you succeed. You know, Denny Hamlin, that's how I kind of got interested in um, NASCAR in the first place. So, by all means, man, go out there. Get that W. Um any fans of Denny, let me know. Uh, I might do. A, I might even think about a giveaway with with that. I don't know. You know, um, NASCAR, of course, is not my main focus, but hey, I might. Um, as we dive deeper, not no, actually, no, we're not diving deeper. As we continue on, as we continue on, IndyCar, their 2022 season has been released. Um, I mean, we could run down the line. Uh, starts off with Saint. Ooh, starts off with the streets of St. Pe Saint, Saint Petersburg. Jeez. Um, their, actually, their season actually starts in February. February 27th, streets of St. Petersburg. Um, they're finishing off with the uh, 
with Laguna Seca, but I could dive into it, you know. So, St. Petersburg, uh, Texas Motor Speedway, then uh, April 10th, the third race, third round, brings us to streets of Long Beach. Um, then for May, it's Barber Motorsport Park, Indianapolis, of course, the, uh, the road course, and then there's the Indianapolis 500. Um, in June, we're going back to Detroit Raceway at Belle Isle Park, and then Road America. Uh, July, it's Mid Ohio Sports Car Course. It's the streets of Toronto. Um, then it's the Iowa Speedway Race One, then Race Two, and then it's to the um, IMS Road Course. Um, August brings us to Nashville and uh, Worldwide Technology Raceway, and then September brings us to Portland. And like I said, lastly is the Laguna Seca uh, in Monterey. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, that's the full season that they have, the full series schedule for 2022. Um, I'm okay, but it doesn't really matter to me where they go. Uh, it doesn't really matter, like, in my opinion. As long as they're racing, as long as they're putting down the medal and going hard, don't matter. Uh, as you move forward, Jimmy Johnson. I'll be honest with you, that's a seven-time world champion in NASCAR. Um... I'm not 100% sure how the hell I didn't recognize this name. And because of those Carvana commercials with the uh, bedazzling. It's funny. It's a funny commercial. It's a nice little commercial. I, I, I do enjoy it when it comes on. Um, I, think, I mean, I, I don't really watch TV, but it comes on like the streaming services and stuff like that. So, hey, I recognize the name now. I know who he is. But... It was an exciting race at Laguna Seca. Um, one thing, you know, it was one great action. Okay, great overtakes, great defending, and a lot of guys going back and forth. A lot of guys going at it. Right, that's one. But another thing that I actually want to highlight, you know, we know the star of the race. Yes, he is former F1, unfortunately. So I, I mean, my bad. <laughs> I do like Formula One, um, a lot, but Roman Grosjean. Impressive moves, impressive dive bombs throughout the race. You know, really driving the hell out of that car, if I had to say it. Driving the hell out of that car. And really putting down pedal to the metal. Um, You know, he's had, what, three podiums on this season? Uh, So, wow. What a, what a, what, what a, what, what, what a rookie year to start off with. You know, what, what a time to, 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 to be alive. Nah, let me stop. Um, what a what a way to come into the sport. What a way to bring in. You know, what a way to have fans um, have your back. So by all means, good work, Roman. Um, or Romine. I, have, I, I say Roman. I'm gonna just say the, the Americanized way. But he showcased skill and poise to go from P13 to P3. He equaled the. Um, he had a race high, 27 overtakes. And I believe 17 of those or 15 of those was for position. Um, and he equaled uh, 10 position overtakes uh, of going from P13 to P3 uh, with, I believe, Marcus Erickson. Uh, if not Marcus Erickson, then Joseph Newgarden. One of those guys, he, he, he they were on par with 10 uh, spot overtakes from where they started to where they finished. Um so by all means good work roman um you know now the season the season is closing to an end we have alex paulo who is in first um and paddle award who is in second who believes that he is no longer in the championship fight because of his dreadful race at laguna seca don't get me wrong if alex paulo somehow did not race at all and paddle was able to get you know the points that come from getting pole Pass his lap and wins the race. He could actually win the championship. Now, I know that's a pretty that's a it's pretty difficult to do. But as of right now, he's just mainly focused on giving it his all in uh, the final race at uh, Long Beach. So I feel as though a hey, great work. Thus, this great great work thus far this year. Impressive season, impressive run. You know, you are going to be number two in the championship fight. Um, I don't think Joseph Newgard is going to close in on really much anything unless you have another dreadful race like you did in Monterey. Now, I know that Paddle Award is, you know, in my opinion, I think Paddle Award is the fan favorite. Um, 
across a lot of fans, you know. Um, and you can understand why he was thrilling to watch. He was always on. The, he was always on for action. He's always um, pushing. And uh, we've got to see that several races out this season. And good work by him. So it's not. It's not a race to be sad about. It's not a race. It's not a season to be sad about or upset about. It's something to be proud of. Um, and of course, I think that he's going to come back harder and smarter next year. So, by all means, he still has a chance. He still has a chance to win this race. Do I think that he's going to win? No, but he still has a chance to win this championship. Um, but anyway, oh, points update on that for IndyCar. Alex Palo has 517 points. Um, Pat Award is 35 points behind at 482, and then Joseph Newgordon, who is 48 points behind Alex Palo, but 13 points behind Pat Award, and um. I don't think that New Garden really has a chance to fight for the championship. Uh, I'm not sure if his consistency. Well, yeah, he has, he has been relatively consistent, but I don't know if he's gonna necessarily be able to pull away with everything working for him. Uh, obviously, Pato has a way more um, has a better chance of that happening, but I don't think that it's gonna happen for Joseph New Garden unless something catastrophic happens in the race. Um, so, by all means. Uh, Alex Paulo, you are seen as of right now as the provisional champion for uh, what is that sport called for IndyCar uh, for the 2021 season. So obviously he said he's not going to think about that until it's the last lap or something like that uh, in the race in Long Beach. So, hey, by all means, man, keep your poise, keep your focus, focus on just getting that W and uh, placing well in the next race. Um, and uh you know, go out there, have some fun, and hope to see that you're the next uh, you're the next champion. Um, as we go deeper, though, Roman Grosjean, like I said, he was a star of the race, and I also want to highlight his message to people who's trying to get into Formula One and all that good stuff. I want to highlight his message. I want to read it. I'm going to read it um, relatively as a whole. Obviously, it's a broken message, um, but I'm going to read the quotes that... Uh, that came out of that interview and of that conversation. So it goes like, he said, I understand a lot of kids. I don't know why I'm reading it like that. I mean, that's how I read. I understand a lot of kids want to make it to Formula One. If it's to be at the back of the grid every weekend, <laughs> I think you're better here. It's the freedom of driving a car the way that you like to drive it. He added, uh, you don't need to look after charging mode push mode tire temperature tire window so on and so on and so on you just go in the car leave the pit lane and then you push every single lap you play a bit with your bars but as i said you push 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 come in pit new tires the ability to enjoy every single lap that we do uh enjoy the fact that you can be competitive in any team makes it that the at oh shoot whew, makes it that the atmosphere in the paddock obviously with the support of the fans been just a whole package that i've enjoyed a lot in my head, in my head personally, I think he's saying, hey, this is a chance, a way better chance than Formula One would give you, if I'm being honest with you. And this is why I love IndyCar, because like he stated, you can join up with damn near any team and be relatively competitive. As a rookie, as a beginner, someone who's just coming in, you have a good strategy, you have a good driver. You have someone who can focus, put the pedal down to the metal and really handle. Well, you can be competitive for that championship. You can be competitive for that. I'm not sure what position he's in at this moment, but Roman Grosjean coming in. I'm going to I'm going to actually look it up. But um, let me see. But Roman Grosjean coming in, right? Um, Let me look at where he's at real quick. I'm trying to see what position he's at in the championship. Uh, sorry if you see my phone, but anyway, huh? Fifteenth? Is he fifteenth in the championship? Yeah, I think he is fifteenth in the championship. Either way. And that's because he didn't race in some of those races as well. 
one and he's two he's a rookie if you think about it but anyway like i was saying he was basically saying that when you come into f1 when you go into f1 yes there are more things that you have to deal with and all that kind of stuff but also as we can see in someone like mick schumacher as we can see in like uh usually any rookie that's coming in to those sports you we you, we can see when they come in they end up in the back of the field type of pack type of team yes normally they, they can have some great talent and they can do some damage and they can showcase like some real skill all in all but we see that they're normally fighting for a back of the pack normally fighting for a middle back of the pack type of position which sucks especially when you have a talented driver an indy car though it don't really matter who you are race after race you can go after it you can get in there and actually fight for top positions you can actually you know be rewarded for having that skill rewarded for having a good strategy uh whereas in formula one i've kind of dabbled in saying this before formula one is is is, is a little bit pay to win kind of you know what i'm saying um whereas indycar not that same atmosphere so I love the message that he's given to those people who are trying to make their way into Formula One. Obviously, everybody wants to make it into Formula One and they want to be the next uh, driver's champion. But IndyCar is a great way to go. You know, it's and I mean, with all these exceptional drivers who are going to be bringing in fans from other places as well. I think that not only are you going to be a star in the sport, but you're also going to grow the sport as a whole. So by all means, I think as though IndyCar is a great place for people to go. Uh, especially, you know, like the Formula 2 drivers, Formula 3 drivers. I think IndyCar might be a great place for them to go. Um, don't get me wrong. Go after the goal that you want to go after. But I think IndyCar would be a great way for you to actually come into a new racing series and possibly be a damn champion in your first season. You know? Um, you know, now with the way Formula 1 is set up, it's a little pay to win. You got to have the monies. You got to have the funding to, to really go into the R&Ds and and a lot of the times some teams don't have that or a lot of times the teams that will pick you or will sign you on don't necessarily have that that that, that what you're trying to attain you know they don't have uh the necessary backing for what you want and which is to fight for a championship in indycar don't really matter what team you're on you go out there you push you get a good strategy going and boom you just might find yourself in that winner circle simple as that that's all i got for this episode that's all i got for today this week um i want to thank you for tuning in i want to thank you for listening in like i said i am thinking about that giveaway with the aston martin merch probably going to be a polo and a, and a cap um just something i myself personally don't really wear a lot of formula one merch or racing merch in general um i do plan on doing so because i mean i plan on racing again um but not in formula one or nothing like that but i plan on wearing like race type merch uh maybe not in videos and stuff like that but on a regular basis now like i said this is it for this episode i want to thank you for tuning in i want to thank you for listening if you enjoyed this episode or if you feel as though you know like the giveaway is a good idea if you feel as though that you 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 want to share this information with your peoples rate the show five stars on wherever you choose to listen to podcasts you know i'm available on all streaming platforms and if you like video versions of podcasts you can head on over to youtube um to my youtube channel at tyreek waldron motorsport show i did forget the name of it for a second and uh definitely tune in um hit that subscribe button you know hit that like button share it with your peoples all the good vibes all the good people you know and uh i want to thank you all for coming in and uh listening peace out have a wonderful week wonderful weekend whatever uh races that are coming up you know we have formula one sochi apparently it's supposed to rain but this has so many f1 fans scarred now we normally were like oh rain we're excited but now after spa everyone seems a little down they're like well wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute. how much rain are we talking <laughs> you know so um to everyone out there uh hopefully sochi is not as bad as spa i don't think anything could get that bad um but hamilton signs and i believe we're stapping have half points at this moment in time i'm not sure if they're going to be able to i don't i don't think that they're going to be able to uh i think they're going to keep that for the rest of their career unless there's another half points race within the future um 
So, good luck to them. Good luck to all the races. Good luck to all the races out there. Um, and it's Sochi. I'm not sure who performs well at Sochi or Russia. I believe Mazepin is Russian, so I'm not sure if he's going to have a fan support or like that. Who knows? He might, but I mean, hey, he's still going to be fighting for back of the pack type of thing. Um, but either way, not really worried about that. Um, I want to thank you for tuning in. Thank you for listening. Obviously, there's going to be races coming up this season, this weekend. Um, the San, the what was it? The Masano was it? San, yeah, I think it was the Masano MotoGP race that also occurred. Uh, MotoGP not race testing. Um, I believe Alicia Spargaro came out on top of that with came out on top with that testing. I got to dive into it more. I'll talk about it next week. I want to thank you for tuning in as always. I love you. Peace.